All right, people, welcome to the best, I know, clickbait title, the best post-Worlds TCG 2016 balance prediction. So I said that after Worlds concluded, I would go ahead and redo my balance prediction because the balance prediction that I did previously for July through August, I thought they were going to do a list before Worlds, but it seems like they're not doing the list until after Worlds, even after August, so maybe September, maybe October, I don't know when, but I'm here to do my ban list prediction update. So, as we know, Blue Eyes won, Shinsuke, God, he is such a gangster, like, how you hit second place in 2014, first place in 2015, and then you bring it back again for 2016, like, I don't think there's ever been a two-time-in-a-row world champion, so, wow, congratulations. Since it's gay, God, you, 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 you're a master, you're the master. <laughs> I hope you guys like that, uh, that thumbnail that I created, that image. <laughs> uh, and with that, I uh, wanted to go ahead and address something before we get into it. Blue Eyes won. They won Worlds. I don't think they're going to get hit. Nope, 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 not going to get hit. I think they're going to get, you know, just like Teletree, man. Congratulations, you won Worlds. All right, moving on. So, uh, maybe it can influence the decks that actually showed up can influence what we're going to be hit. But I don't think there was anything that showed up at Worlds that was like a curveball or, or wouldn't be already hit in the uh, TCG list. So, I'm going to go ahead and jump into it, my uh, balance position, this is post worlds, this is what I think they're going to do for the next list, and uh, or I'm fairly confident in this balance prediction, I think that's going to be a great one, um, if you don't want to sit here and hear me uh, explain everything, then go ahead and click in the description, there it is, there is my entire uh, balance prediction, and uh, in the comments section below, tell me what you guys think, you know, I, I'm... All, all ears, even though I watch a ton of people's bandless predictions and they're so liberal and they're so biased and it's just, ugh, you know, that I just want to smack you. But uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm here to listen to what you guys have to say, you know, and hopefully we get our list soon and we're going to go ahead and see how many I get correct. So I'm going to actually go in reverse order because I think it builds up more anticipation. So we're going to go from unlimited, which is kind of like, you know, who cares to banned. So started off the first card we have. Alert of Darkness. I think that Alert of Darkness is going to move up to three. Uh, not only do we have a set precedence, nor am I going to do a whole bunch of editing in this video. I'm not going to do, you know, take a drink every time I say set precedence, but I will refer to set precedence. Uh, no, we have precedence from the OCG with Alert at uh, three. Uh, Alert moving up to two in these last couple months really didn't do much. You know, we saw it in a little bit of Cosmos, we saw it a little bit of Monarchs, and then, you know, but it's overall, it's a fine card, you know. Uh, it can move up to three, no one would care. You have three Alert, more power to you, you know. Alright, now uh, if it sent the monster to the graveyard, hell no, but you want to banish your dark monster to draw two, even out with resources, sure, more power to you. Alright, so that's a simple one. Moving on to the next card that I think will be unlimited, I'm going to say Honest. I think uh, this is the time that Honest will go ahead and move up to three, especially with Blue Eyes and its prime, it wins world, it's going to be a competitive deck in the TCG. Uh, if you want to go ahead and throw Triple Honest in your Blue Eyes deck, more power to you, it means if it helps you OTK, but I mean, does Blue Eyes really need help OTK? Uh, we also have precedence from the OCG, Honest is at 3, and at this point, no one really cares. I know some people argue, like, oh, if Honest went up to 3, then, oh my god, Bujins. Bujins already had multiple Honests. They already and where are they, exactly? So, no one really cares, so, you know, there's a, there's a lot of light support, and, uh, yeah, Honest to 3, that's fine, you know? Uh, if you get hit with it, then rip, <laughs> but, you know, this game is based on locking, and in that, in that sense, then Honest is fine at 3. It's, it's not one of the big hindrance cards. Alright, moving on to the last card that I have three. I only have three unlimits. Uh, I have Debris Dragon. Debris Dragon is probably the easiest unlimit to predict. Uh, it went to two, it did absolutely nothing. Uh, it is at three in the OCG as well, so simply just moving it up to three and really wouldn't change anything. So Debris Dragon unlimited as well. And that's it. So uh, <laughs> before we move on to some elements, let me just address the things. So I know the last list, I believe I said. What'd I say? I believe that I said. I know I definitely, I definitely said Dragon Ravine, but I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna do it. You know, I, I thought that maybe they would, but then I convinced myself they're not gonna do it. Uh, that they're just gonna go ahead and keep it at two, especially since we don't have set precedence. OCG has one Dragon Ravine, so they're probably just gonna go ahead and leave it there. Now if they do, and they unlimited Dragon Ravine, awesome, cool, but I'm not gonna predict it, you know? I'd rather just say they're not gonna do it, and they not do it, then predict it, and then be wrong. So, you know, that's how I feel. I'm trying to get really into Konami's head, absolutely, and I cannot confidently say that they would unlimit Dragon Ravine. So, yeah. 
And I think I also said Car Trooper, but no, I'm not going to take that one. I, if they were going to unlimit Car Trooper, they would have done it a long time ago. It just seems like they're not a big fan of the Troop Duke Scoop, uh, especially with a potential hit to Dante where you could just throw in three Car Troopers. And we saw some PK related decks at Worlds throw in some Car Troopers because we already know the strength of that with uh, Millie. And so I think they'll probably just go ahead and keep Car Trooper uh, at two. At two. If they move to three, okay, that's fine, but I'm not going to predict it. So a couple of changes from my uh, previous Bamboo's prediction. All right, moving on to semi-limits. So semi-limits, I have two, two semi-limits. There's not a lot of semi-limits. I mean, some of is the smallest part of the list, so uh, not too many cards here. So starting it off, I have does not restrict. I mean, that's that's an easy one. I moved up to two in the OCG, so we have set presence on that. It really did like nothing. Very, very little, very little. We saw a couple of times, but in comparison to Norden, it's you know it's nothing. So. Thousand Night Restrict moving up to two would be fine and eventually to three on the next list. All right, uh, next I have the next card at semi limited. Like I said, I only have two, and this is my first Cosmo hit because in my previous ban list prediction, I didn't have any Cosmo hits because I was like, well, if they're not going to show up the world and they can't show up the world, why do any Cosmo hits? Do a list before worlds, no Cosmo hits, and then the ones after this, the, the deep fall list, maybe in like November, do ahead, go ahead and start doing Cosmo hits. But now, since this would be the default list post world, uh, I was like, all right, let's do some Cosmo hits. Uh, I will try to explain all of them. I, I got a couple. I got a couple. So this is the first one. Semi limited of Tin Can. Uh, I think that they're gonna, just going to take it slow. They're going to try to see Tin Can at two. Tin Can is obviously one of the best uh, Cosmo cards. It's your searcher, it's your consistency. Uh, that is the fact that it's not once per turn. That is during either play then phase. Like there is no argument that Tin Can uh, should be one of the three cards you can argue to get hit, right? So, I think that semi-limited would be starting off would be fine, and if it persists, then they can go ahead and limit it. But I think that by putting Tin Can to 2, it lowers the deck's consistency a little bit, that they don't have as many Tin Cans to, uh, to get, and then with the additional hit, the indirect hit, that will also lower the consistency of Tin Can a little bit. And I think that's how you address Cosmos, you lower the consistency, you know? Uh, I don't think, in my personal opinion, taking out, you know, limiting Dark Destroyer it would is uh, really beneficial to the deck, you know, it would hurt a little bit too much, and it allows for the balance of the deck, like, okay, well, you have Triple Dark Destroyer, but, you know, sure, he's a 3,000 monster, and the whole thing, oh, well, he can't be targeted, yeah, that's fine, but if you're arguing that he's a 3,000 monster, it, it does things, I mean, we got the lies for goodness sakes, you know, and uh, it, it also, uh, it's the key card in the deck, and also fights against the fact that Keating probably won't get hit, you know, I'm not going to protect Keating, though, that's a little bit of a spoiler, so, uh, What's one way to fight Keating? If you hit Dark Destroyer to one, and of course, with the print of everybody getting Utopia Lightning, what's a key card to go ahead and take out Dark Destroyer? All oh, right, Utopia Lightning. So it just promotes the use of Utopia Lightning even more, if not any. So I think just lowering the consistency, you know, Tin Can is one of the key cards in enabling Dark Destroyer. So if you just lower the consistency of Tin Can, we'll go ahead and uh, do similar to a Burning Abyss hit. Uh, this will probably be like the Sir. You know, we'll put Sir down the one, and we'll put a different card. Uh, start down to two and a different card down to one. We'll put Tin Can down to two and a different card down to one. So we'll get to that one other card when we get to the limited section. But uh, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and predict that Tin Can will get semi limited. And uh, yeah, that's all the cards that I have for semi limited. Not much, right? <laughs> Alright, moving on to the limited section. Uh, starting it off, I have card demise. Card demise, uh, I think we'll get limited to one. I think it'll get the soul charge treatment where it's that powerful card, it's a stupid card, and if you pull it off, you pull it off. Uh, if we see some shenanigans with soul charge at worlds, and it's a powerful card, it really is. And if you get it, you get it. But uh, yeah, I don't think they're gonna ban it. I think they're just gonna put it at one. It's one of them anime cards that's really strong, powerful to get at one, you get it, you use it. All right, so. Uh, I know it's kind of a hit to, uh, you know, them slower decks and people think that card is fair, it's not. People think that, you know, we should fight fire, fire, and the, that to, we should keep card at three and bring back Harpy Shed, Dust Rabbit Stone. No, we're not going to do that either. Uh, but uh, in that sense, uh, card will be at one. And, uh, you know what, let me go ahead and address this while we're here, we're just there. Uh, I don't have Solemn Strike because Solemn Strike. Uh, is getting a reprint in the tins and they want to sell it, so I don't think it's going to be list this. Maybe next list they'll go ahead and put it down to one, put it down, I mean, put it down to two, put it down to one, give it the, the solemn warning treatment, but I don't think this is going to be the list. And in the same sense, I don't think Twin Twister is going to get heated. I think that both of those are going to stay at three. Uh, that uh, Both in TCG and OCG, we seem like they have an okay balance, and I think Konami is okay with that, so. Uh, especially when it comes to making money, so. Uh, yeah. So now we can go ahead and move on to the next card. This is a, another hit to Cosmos, an indirect hit. We have Emergency Teleport down to one. Uh, so with Emergency Teleport down to one and Tin Can at two, that definitely lowers the consistency of you just busting out that first turn kin, Tin Can and uh, you know go in hand with it. Because we already know that Tin Can is ridiculous, especially first turn Tin Can. The Tin Can can go off with the Emergency Teleport and phase to, before it banishes itself to hop out of the way. So uh, 
the, we put this card to, to last list and it was really kind of an indirect hit. It was kind of like the, the small little tour guide hit to Cosmos, but we're going to take it a little bit farther. Uh, we have set precedence. OG has one minute in teleport and they don't even have Cosmos. So I'm going to attack it from the monster. The psychic monster from the deck is very powerful. Uh, so it'll just be a little bit lower consistency. You have one image to teleport to 10 can. And uh, yeah, you can see a lot of you still have your three Dr. Shores, so more power to you, but you would start turning to more like a brick, brick city deck, like you just kind of step back, kind of like Monarch. So you're still a good deck, you're still, you can still easily be top deck, top tier if you, you know, play your cards right, but uh, your consistency is just lower than I think that uh, the way that Konami is going to approach that. I don't think they're going to do Dr. Story hits, I think they lower the consistency. Uh, moving on to the next card, that's another hit to Cosmos, so we're going to go down the top tier deck. Uh, we have limited to one, we have Cosmo Town. I definitely think that. Uh, Konami looks at Cosmos and they realize that this card is badly made. Uh, that it's, it's it's just too much of a helmet card. The plus one banish grab a Cosmo act, that's ri that's ridiculous. The mulligan rule, that's ridiculous. The grabbing back of when this card is destroyed to grab another Cosmo Town so you never even touch Cosmo Town, that's ridiculous. So I think they're gonna go ahead and limit Cosmo Town. Now, when if this does happen, and when you're doing Cosmos, who cares if they grab whatever they grab with Cosmos? Make sure you pop that Cosmo Town, all right? Uh, that makes the duel much more simple to duel against. And it's not as helmet as just, all right, well, I, I'm not gonna get rid of the Cosmo Town, they'll just get Cosmo Town. They only have one. So get rid of that Cosmo Town, sure they're gonna go ahead and add a Cosmo card from the deck in your hand, right? but at least that Cosmo Town is gone. It also lowers the consistency of getting it in your opening hand. Uh, they might go ahead and run the one Cosmo Town with triple terraforming, but that's more power to them, you know, more tattoo, especially since there's no chicken gang to fill in that spot, so you could easily dead draw into a lot of terraformings, but more power to you. So yeah, uh, and that's really all the hits that I have. I have Tin Can to two, um, which is Teleport to one, and Cosmo Town to one. No Dr. Stray hits, because I just don't think it's necessary. So I, I think, if, if all of these hits were to happen to Cosmos, they would still be good. They'd still be good. And possibly maybe top tier, you know? Uh, and they warrant a future hit in, uh, in another list. But I think that this is a fine for the, you know, the first major hit, the, you know, the, the Graph to, to Tour Guide to one, Emergency Teleport to one. This is their kit. This is the Cosmos hit. Uh, it's a different miss. So, all right. So that's it for Cosmos. Let's go ahead and move on to the next top deck. Let's go ahead and do some Warner kits. So, starting off, we have. Pantheism to one. That's that's the obvious one. And uh, we saw one Pantheism, one domain at Worlds, and you know what? Despite doing really well at Worlds, I mean, they did get, you know, two out of the top eight, it wasn't overbearing, you know? And for some reason, oh God, I've never seen so many people open up with first turn Pantheism. Like, for, for being at one, ridiculous. But uh, we, we saw the struggle. We saw the Monarch struggle of only having one Pantheism. You can't, you know, grab the Pantheism, pick the Pantheism, draw a whole bunch of, and, you know, banish one so it only search. So, overall, one Pantheism is a great hit. And we can clearly see that, uh, that OCG did it correctly, that if we follow suit with OCG's hits, that we'll have Monarchs be good, but not broken, you know? So, definitely Pantheism down to one is a great hit. And the next hit to Monarchs that we have is copying off of OCG, set presents, everything like that, domain to one as well. I mean, we already know it's a fly gate card line extra deck. And we saw a little bit of, I believe in Dragon Bills, we saw domain Monarchs, but mostly we saw extra deck Monarchs. And you know what, that's fine as well. If Monarchs have to turn the extra deck Monarchs to be the strong in a sense, then that's fine, because at least you're not being a floodgate and walking out of the duel. So, uh, one domain is fine. One domain is fine. One pantheism is fine. I think that's pretty much all you have to do. I know some people talk about Mox, so forth, and all that. I don't think you have to take it that, uh, that far. That I think that with these two hits, we'll go ahead and see uh, what's that precedence. We'll go ahead and see what monarchs do. If we need to take it a next step farther, we can drop that in the next list. But for now, just take it on to uh, the world. You know, uh, we saw that last uh, world's list, post this world's list, that you just do the hits that were at worlds, and then things will be fine. Remotely be fine. You know, and if you got to take it a step farther, you can take it a step farther. So. That's my monarch hits, just domain and pantheism number one. Uh, the consistency is lowered, and that's a major part where, yeah, sure, they can they can still open up really good and do a strong place, which is fine, but they can easily break just as uh, harder. So, and I, I did see the transformative plates of the deck, so it adds a little bit more creativity to the whole uh, scheme of things. All right, moving on to uh, let's go with Burning Abyss. We'll go with Burning Abyss next. So, Burning Abyss. The first hit I have for Burning Abyss is Scarm. Scarm limited. Uh, this is just simply copying off those two set precedents. Uh, we see that in combination and tandem with both OCG and T2, we saw we saw a little bit. I think we saw one PK fire, and the the deck was actually still there, still uh, fairly strong, but it wasn't overbearingly strong. And that, I think that's where Konami wants to sit, where we can go ahead and put Burning Abyss down, but they're not going to be top tier tier one. I mean, they're tier one for 
the last two years. That's a little bit ridiculous. So with a SCARM limit similar to OCD, along with our SIR semi-limited and graph limit, and of course our, our next thing that we're going to go ahead and address, uh, I think that that will, that will be where Burning Abyss sit, where they won't be, you know, top tier, top tier, tier one, but with our list combining precedents, uh, similar to what they're at World, that's where we'll go ahead and see them. It's more of a lower tier, tier two deck, which is fine. And then, like I said, we already have one more hit to Burning Abyss, and this is obvious, uh, Dante, Traveler, Burning Abyss, limited as well. So you only get one Dante, and a couple of people saying, like, ban Dante, you don't need one. Well, that's fine. Like I said, we don't want to kill the deck, we just want to put it down to a lower tier spot. So, uh, you only have one Dante, you only have access to one Dante, so, you know, having multiple rank 3 engines and, uh, might be a little bit much for only having one Dante, so we might have to see a couple of changes to uh, the PK Fire. Uh, will this possibly be top tier shit? Maybe, we, you know, we'll find out, but from what we've seen from At Worlds, you know, didn't even get top 8, you know, we, we can see that it'll sit at an appropriate uh, place for where we want uh, Burning Best to be in the TTG. And if they continue to persist and be top tier shit and be tier one, then we can take it a step farther. You know, we can go ahead and limit Sir. We can, you know, take out Dante. So, uh, but I think that the original Burning Abyss monsters, the the Sir, the Graph, the Scarm, and the Dante, they, I think that uh, those those four have to be, you know, hit in some capacity. So, yeah. All right, moving on to some uh, pendulum hits and perform power hits, because. Uh, some people think that they don't need to hit, they need to hit. They're definitely, you know, one of the four decks. Like the, some people are like, oh, there's only four top tier decks. It's only Monarch, Cosmos, and PK. But no, 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 you're forgetting about the Pendulum. The former Pal, they were definitely top tier. Uh, they won uh, US Nets, and of course Konami can see that. So uh, they're going to get hit on the head. And what do I think they're going to get hit? Simply just a President's hit. So starting off, we have limited Pendulum Sorcerer down to one. And I know what you're probably saying, like, oh, well, he's confirmed to be written to be printed 10, so not going to hit him because that's money. He's not a money card. He's not really not. You can literally pick up a Pendulum Sorcerer for like eight bucks right now. That, that's it. In comparison to Solemn Strike, which is like a $50 card where you definitely want to get it, this is literally only one type of deck. This is only performer power. And uh, he's not that big of a money card. You know, we put him in 10. Uh, hitting Sorcerer down to one is not going to deter you from picking up multiple that's not going to just kind of deter you. So, uh, Pendulum Sorcerer needs to be limited down to one. Uh, so we saw in OCG that they took it a step farther than we did in our Dressage list, and pull and behold, people thought that Pendulums are dead, and <laughs> they're definitely not, you know. Multiple Sorcerers, ridiculous. Uh, the high consistency of getting him, depending on the pop to the search to, uh, yeah, he is definitely ridiculous. So, we're going to go ahead and limit Sorcerer down to one. And uh, he will stay there, he will stay there, you know. And uh, the whole, uh, I know some people are like, well, if we hit Sorcerer and we hit Monkey Board, can we bring that Skull Cut out your No, you don't, you don't hit things and give things at the same time. Like, we hit, and then later, if they don't do things, we give them back eventually. Like, we don't hit and give at the same time. Doesn't make any sense. So, no, Sorcerer goes, uh, goes down to one. All right. And uh, moving on to band cards. We're done with Limited. We're moving on to band. I only have one band card, and I pretty much already stated it. Monkey Board. Monkey Board should be banned. Uh, he's a one card pendulum scale, and I uh, guess you in your same boat, you could argue, well, Scout is, but Scout, you're limited to only please, while Monkey Board plus searching a unicorn allows your pendulum scale to be one to eight. You could play it and throw it into any deck. Uh, he, he's just too ridiculous, you know, he's just too ridiculous. Uh, and I said, we're not going to go ahead and put Skull Curl Joker up, to, uh, up either. He will be at one, Source will be at one, Monkey Board will be banned, and we will keep things like this for the Performer Pals uh, for a while. You know, and we have to go to these extremes for the pendulum based decks because they're just so powerful. So uh, that's really all I have for bands. Uh, it's just Monkey Board. I know last time, uh, last playing this prediction, I predicted that they were going to move Wall of Rune up, or Light up to two, and they were going to ban uh, Life Equalizer. I mean, it just seems like, especially from what we've seen this uh, this format, I told us that we're fine with what we did for the whole FTK thing. That, yeah, we didn't ban a Life Equalizer. Yeah, it can potentially be a sacky ass card, but did we see it at all? Absolutely not, and I think Konami's fine with that. That with the banning of Chicken Game and the limiting of Start Dark Dominant, I think that Konami will be happy and will keep everything the same. And that includes just keeping Wall Wolverine and like at one as well. I mean, they potentially could probably move it up to two, but that just brings more problem of Life Equalizer. Uh, so maybe they'll go ahead and set precedence and move Life Equalizer up to, I mean, uh, I mean, Wall Wolverine Light up to two, but without banning Life Equalizer, I mean, there's definitely a problem with that idea, uh, but I don't think Konami's going to do that, because if they wanted to move while we're in light, they would have done it a long time ago, so I'm not even going to try to predict that. So, uh, yeah, we are done here. So, 
Uh, tell me what you guys think about this balance prediction. As I said, we will be either waiting till September, maybe October, and I'll go ahead and see how many I got right. If I get the whole list right, I mean, come on, that'd be great. But overall, if this was definitively, if this was our TCG list, I think I'd be fine with this. Act. I think that every single deck got something uh, that we can go ahead and see a move out of the way of the current meta, the evolution of ABCs, which of course also use on this. Like I forgot to mention that when I was talking about this. Uh, blue eyes, the, the moon, uh, and we'll start moving more toward uh, out of this era, which is kind of a stale format, it really was. Uh, that you know, in the April list, all we really did was take up the form pals while you know, Monarchs was still there with all their cards, and Cosmos still there with all those cards, and uh, PK Fire was still there with all the cards. So, while it, it feels like we've artificially been having these uh, four decks being top tier for pretty much all of 2016, to say the least, uh, that we can go ahead and move forward with the next format of cards. So uh, like I said, in the comments section below, tell me what you guys were going to predict on the Banner's prediction. Uh, we'll see how right I am, so I hope that you guys enjoy this Banner's prediction. It's, it's fun to do these things to talk. I'm, I know I'm a long-winded person that we spent like 20 minutes talking about this. But uh, thank you for uh, listening, uh, as always. So thank you guys for watching. Thanks for all the support. And let's just see how many I get right. All right, people. See you guys next time.